Okay, folks, it's time to build. Um, just, I've got my cut plan with me over there. Okay, that's, uh, yeah. This will be the printed version, complete with diagrams, that one among others. And a little tip that I'm going to start with is on the 2x4s. I'm going to actually mark all my 2x4s, including the 16th inch cut, and figure out exactly what I've got so I can actually use the best parts of the 2x4s for the most important parts of the entire table. So the 2x4s are mainly for the table. Um, so let me get them all marked up and I'll show you that. Okay, so here's the first case where I've actually run into a little problem. I've already pre-marked one of the boards. Let me see if I can show you over here, though. Here's another board, and you can see that there's some damage to the board, or not so much damage. That's how the wood was actually when they cut it. Um, so rather than have that show on the legs, what I chose to do is I cut one leg off the left side, another leg off the right side, and then in the middle, I'm cutting two other pieces. Now, if we go and we look at the cut sheet, just to give you a little tip on that, you can see all of the different dimensions in yellow. And what I did was I figured out that I can cut the legs, I can cut the horizontal, and I can cut the corner supports. Uh-oh. Okay, I just discovered another problem. So this is why it's good to actually mark everything before you cut. Uh, the inside corner supports are actually, that's going to be fun. I might have to get some additional wood. Uh, I might have to do something different. I'm going to have to figure that one out in a minute. All right, here's what happened, and there's no need to panic. Now, going back to the cut sheet, going back to the design, the section in yellow right here, that actually shows all the different cuts, and I actually put them in a specific order. The last two are actually the inside corner supports for the table, uh, which actually go on top of the table and connect the table to the box. And the last one is the tabletop itself. So as far as the 2x4s and the main frame, it's just those first three numbers. Now what happened was, I'm always trying to figure out how to be efficient. And I went with the 24 and a quarter there for the table leg. And I went for the 20 inches for the long side. And then I had a choice between 11 and 16 and 13 sixteenths, or so I thought where I was trying to figure out, okay, if a, if each 2x4 is roughly 8 feet long, I want to take the larger of the two, and then I'll pick the 11 out of the scraps. Well, turns out that larger one is the inside corner support, which I actually was planning on using different lumber because I had some scraps left over. And there's my scraps. And so those are actually 2x3, not 2x4, with a 2x4 sandwiched in the middle. I've already measured out, and as far as the 16 and 13 sixteenths. I have enough for the with the two by threes to actually cut all the inside corner supports. So really, all I got to deal with the frame is the two larger dimensions and the smaller of the two dimensions. So there's plenty of wood here. I just had forgotten, or I had already planned with my scraps that I was going to use them. I had forgotten that the scraps were going to go to the inside corner supports and got a little ahead of myself. So now I'm just going to remeasure everything, mark everything, and then start cutting. Okay, all the wood's been cut, and there's even some uh, scrap left over when I'm done. Uh, so I'm going to start cutting, and I'll show you the finished product. All right, there you have it, folks. Eight pieces of legs on the left, lo uh, four long pieces in the middle, four short pieces on the right, the uh, supports for inside the box, behind it, and a bunch of scrap wood, and a pile of sawdust. <laughs> So that's all the cutting, and uh, one little tip, a nice sharp saw really helps. Um, I'm not advertising one particular company there, but uh, I gotta say, it took me a lot less time to cut this than I thought it would, at least a lot less time compared to the last box. Um, but then that's just the two by support pieces, so I've still got yet to cut the uh, redwood uh, fence boards as siding. All right, so that's it for the cutting. Uh, here I'm gonna start assembling. Okay, now let's start the construction part of this. And I just wanted to try and give you an idea of what things look like compared to what you'll see on paper. So now this is going to be the long side view that I'm working on. And the legs are actually, there's two 
uh, boards for each leg. So let's just kind of watch this and compare. And uh, I'm just going to kind of build it almost like a time lapse. So there's the legs as if I turned it in this direction. There's the legs. The long boards that will be sandwiched. More legs on top of the long boards. And the short boards on the outside of that structure sticking up. Now I can't, since I haven't screwed anything together yet, I can't put the remaining legs and long boards. But uh, I'm going to strip this down and I'll show you how I'm going to build it. So first I'm going to attach the legs, or one part of the legs, to the long boards. Okay folks, that's a long side with two legs assembled. I just gonna, I'm going to build another one of these and then I'll join them together with the short side legs. This is actually turning out to be a smaller base than I've been envisioning. Um, and if you look at the, the diagram, I should probably point out, this would be looking at this head on, except that that's, see there's one in the front, one in the back, and then we'll have the boards running across the front. So that's the back one. I'll build one for the front. I chose that to be in the back because I left my label saying long on there and forgot I had I wrote long on all the long pieces but I didn't turn them in the same direction when I built it so my mistake uh, it is what it is but oh the other thing I was going to point out on the picture so if you look at the picture the picture makes it look like it's a lot wider well keep in mind that this picture is not to scale is a very generic looking picture that represents any one of these that you would build okay so now I've got the front and back with the long sides built I know, it, it's actually taller than it is wide, so it looks a lot more sort of chunky um, than what you see in the picture here. Let's see if I can get you a better shot there. But if you sort of compare that to that, then hopefully you can see. This is just straight on the front, you can't see. You're only seeing the front legs and the long pieces at the base there. You're not seeing the back. Here you see the back, so basically the front and the back match and it will run the short side pieces between them. Okay, so this is where the short side view comes in. And um, I've taken the two, the front and the back, I've laid them on their sides, which they can do now because of the way they're built. Um, although that wasn't my primary reason for making the, beef, the legs so beefy. But here is now the short side view and you can see the four legs sticking down. Now you can see those four legs. You can see the piece in between the two pieces in between them and then there's one piece that runs all the way from left to right and that's what I'm about to mount. Now this looks more stubby in the picture but it was intended to look stubby because it is the shorter side. Wow, talk about stubby. There's practically no distance between those giant uh, beefy legs for the front and the back. Um, but I guess in reality, if you think about it, I've got two five and a half inch wide boards which form the tabletop for this thing. So I'm really matching that width in a, at 11 inches for the short side pieces running across there. So as weird as it looks, um, and as unbelievably beefy as it's going to be, uh, that's the actual design. All right, folks, there's the assembled base, uh, except for the tabletop. And let's just show you kind of what the table pot top will look like. I've had to kind of shift things around on the patio, but you might be able to sort of get a picture now if you consider the base and you consider that the top will actually be cut to match the width of the base there. So these boards, these are just the raw boards before I cut them. Um, once I get them cut, I'll show you the tabletop. Okay, there you go, folks. I put the tabletop on basically by screwing it down and then cutting it in place. Not exactly the best way to do it. Uh, if you've got a better way to actually set the length of a board and cut it in place, I was using a miter box for all the lumber, but the miter box is not wide enough to fit the five and a half inch stock in. Uh, the, the siding boards, the fence boards. Um, so I can't do it in the miter box. I have to do it freehand, which presents its own set of problems. But uh, there it is, it's in. Um, and I've run into a little snag. Turns out all the careful planning and everything else, and what I didn't notice was that the Redwood has a one and a half inch dog ear. So when I entered into the program, the 71 inches in length, which doesn't include the dog ear, I was actually off by a half inch. 
So everything was computed based on that, and I think I'm going to have to just live with a half inch of dog ear um, and go from there. Otherwise, I'm going to have to go out and buy more redwood uh, fence boards. Anyway, just to give you a little bit more perspective now that I have a tabletop on there, the entire unit is going to be the height of the wall. Not the height of this unit, but the height of the wall. But that's still quite high compared to the base. Uh, it's probably the base is probably about halfway. Uh, I think it's 24 inches plus the tabletop, and the wall is 42 and three quarter inches. So not quite. Uh, the base is a little bit more than half. But actually, once I put all the siding on, it's actually going to look like the box on the top is bigger than the base. You'll see what I mean because. Uh, the siding actually wraps around the structure, hiding the top part of the structure, so that mostly what you'll see is the legs going down and the cross pieces down below. Anyway, that's it until I got the next view. Okay, much like I did with the last planter, I'm going to use a similar strategy this time for cutting the boards. I'm actually putting them on top of the table that I just made, which gives me sort of a work surface to work from. I'm going to cut them all to the appropriate size. I'm actually going to gang all four of them together so I get the same cut on all sides and I'll cut them all and then we'll start putting it together. Alright folks, it's getting later and not just because the time changed. Um, I kind of ended up abandoning the idea of ganging everything um, because just because it turned out to be a disaster trying to cut them with, without them shifting around and everything and without having a, a bigger sort of more thought out plan it could make sense to go back to just cutting them individually and as it turns out with the dog ears let's see once I pull off once I saw off the dog ears this will kind of give you an idea how much they'll actually cover so I, I did I lift a little bit of the dog ears as you can see with these that are cut there so I've cut down about half of what I need to cut down um, and uh, I'll continue on cutting and I'll get back to you when I get it all done. Alright folks, base is done. All the wood for the top has been cut, uh, including the supports which I have right over here. And so now I'm going to start assembling. I'm going to turn it on its side and start nailing on the what probably would be best called skirt boards and I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Okay folks, there you have it. The first level is now closed in. Just to give you an idea of scale, it really doesn't stick up all that much. But the difference is going to be, I'm going to put these in here. Let me see if I can get that to stand up for me. Oh, I see why it's not standing up, but okay. That should give you more of a sense of scale. This sucker gets really tall because there's four sets of boards like we have down there. There's three more coming up. So, okay folks, I finally got the inner supports in. I'm not sure what the difference is between this design and the other. What I did, oh, I know what it is that I did differently in the other design. I put the center pieces in first and fastened the walls to the center pieces. Then I was able to put the corner supports in after that. Well, here there's no center pieces, no center dividers. So, the key is to actually toenail it in. So, if you look down here, oh, I got caught on one of them. If you look down here, you can see a nail, and over there you'll see a nail. And it takes a little practice to get the skill of toe nailing. But that's just basically so it'll stand up long enough so you can put the other boards around it, then we'll secure the other boards to these boards. And the more we put on, the more rigid it gets, the easier it'll be to nail everything together. So, off we go. All right, folks, I got a little excited and still kept going before I stopped to do this. So, there's one side all the way up, the rest of it's up two boards so you start to get a sense of how deep this thing's going to be. One more little tip before I finish buttoning this up is I'm actually nailing these in at an angle. don't know how well you can see that. Um, basically what it does is by nailing them in at an angle down it forces the boards to kind of close up and make a seal so that you don't have too much water escaping out the sides or dirt. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, now I'm going to button it up. Alright folks, that's got it. It's done. I just got to fill it with dirt and plant my squash. 
maybe some corn, maybe a couple of beans, do a three sisters. I'm not sure about that part yet, but at least the squash. Because last year it just didn't work out. Go ahead and take a look at my videos, you'll see. But uh, that would be season one or 2011, however you want to. Anyway, just to give you an idea, that's how deep that sucker is. I can barely, well, I can reach down. It's not quite up to my armpit. But uh, kind of reminds me, I already have, I'm already thinking about the next one, which won't actually be for me. Um, and it's going to be a little bit smaller for someone a bit smaller than me. Wow, that sucker is deep. Anyway, that's the planter. Uh, I guess next up I'll fill it up and I'll create another episode or it'll be in the ne next episode that it's filled up and what I planted. Oh, and for those that are interested, I spent $44 this morning on materials plus a new saw plus the nails and screws. I mean, the materials themselves were like 20, probably 20 bucks in that area. The nails and screws were like $10 and the saw was another $10. So in reality, except for the dirt, you can probably get the materials for this for about 20 to 25 and the dirt might cost you another, I should probably say soil, probably cost you another five or so, depending on uh, if you decide to go with multi-layered uh, soil, depending on the drainage and all of that, realistically in the bottom there is a crack between the two boards. That should be enough to drain out any excess water, plus there's plenty of leaking around it. Um, I honestly, at least from the front, it doesn't look too bad, but up along the side, the cuts are really inconsistent. I guess that's what you get for using a handsaw, so well, maybe we'll just call it rustic and be done with that. That should be it for the planner. Oh, sorry, no, addendum number two. I forgot to tell you where you can get the uh, spreadsheet that I based this all on. That I, um, so what I'll do is I'll post somewhere on some website. I'm not sure which website I'm going to post it on. And I'll put a link after the video here. So watch and you'll see it in just a moment.